Welcome back to Sadie's Kitchen, where you're going to learn how to fall obsessively in love with your kitchen and cooking. Today, we are going to recognize the month of February with a treat for your sweet tooth. One of my favorite things to do uh, just about every week is to go by my favorite coffee shop to get a hot cup of coffee and a slice of warm banana nut bread. And today, we are going to make our very own homemade banana nut bread. This is a very quick recipe. It, it goes by very quickly, but you see all this stuff out here and it looks like it's a lot, but it's really not. So hang in here with me until the very end because I wanna share some different ways that you serve banana nut bread. And then I wanna share with you some of the common mistakes that people make when they're cooking banana nut bread. All right, starting off, uh, we have our flour here. I'm gonna share with you all of the ingredients and then I'll kind of back up. I doubled my recipe today because I'm going to be making banana nut bread for some of my neighbors. And I doubled my recipe, but I am going to share with you the standard recipe and you can click on the description button, which is that little B right there. Just tap it and the recipe will come up. Here's what we have today. The first thing we're going to do uh, is we have one and one fourth cup of unbleached, unbleached, not self-rising, unbleached all-purpose flour. And then we have some baking soda, one teaspoon, and we have one teaspoon, uh, half a teaspoon of uh, salt. Here we have our eggs. Uh, the recipe calls for two eggs. And remember, I doubled my recipe, so we would use four. But it also calls uh, for uh, two large eggs. And my, le my eggs are pretty small, so I added an extra one in there. So just know if a recipe calls for large eggs and you don't have large eggs, you might want to add an extra one. We have one teaspoon of vanilla, then we have um, one stick of butter, which is a half a cup uh, for each recipe, and then we have two cups of sugar, uh, one for the single recipe. So I'm gonna back up here and just kind of talk to you about these ingredients over to the right of me right here. One of the most common mistakes people make when making banana nut bread is trying to pick out the right banana. Now, I have the right recipe for you, the perfect recipe. Don't go Googling, don't look for another banana nut bread recipe. This is the most moist banana nut bread that you're ever gonna taste. And I will also wanna share with you too, how you're going to pick your bananas. Now, I saved these bananas for you today because these bananas right here are over, 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 over ripe very overripe. So you're not going to use these. They're really mushy. They've turned black. Uh, they're just really ready for the trash can. They're not even ready for eating and they're probably spoiled, but I wanted to keep them here just to show you an example. The bananas here are, they could be okay. They have a little bit of yellow still left on them, but they're still kind of soft and mushy on the inside. Um, I made a mistake a few weeks ago by using some frozen bananas, took them out of the refrigerator um, and unthawed them and there was just water, but I made the banana nut bread anyway. It was very dense. It was ready for the trash can too. I made that mistake for you so you don't have to do it. Now, these bananas here are not ready for, they're not even ready to eat yet. <laughs> And especially they're not ready for, um, you know, making banana nut bread. They would have to sit for several days. And here we go. We have perfect bananas. These are the kinds that you want to have because they have little brown spots all over them. These are perfect for banana nut bread. Now, I need two bananas. Really, I need four because I'm doubling my recipe. So what I might do if I don't get exactly two cups is take one of these and kind of mix it in with it. Uh, one of the other common mistakes people make is they slice the bananas and put them in the banana nut bread and you see big chunks of bananas. That's not how we do it. We're just gonna 
peel these, put them on a plate, take a fork, and mash them up really, really good. Now, look at these uh, bananas. My husband and I eat one of these every single day because bananas are a good source of several vitamins, uh, especially potassium, uh, vitamin B6, and vitamin C. A diet high in potassium can really help your blood pressure. So we eat one of these every single day. Uh, if not just a banana, we'll put it in a smoothie or whatever. Now we have our um, walnuts here. These, uh, like the recipe called for roasted um, walnuts and I just put these in a skillet with a little bit of um, olive oil and roasted it in the skillet. And the last time I made it, I didn't roast them and I could tell a significant difference in the taste this time. The other thing you wanna know about uh, walnuts is they have a wealth of the good kind of fats, the polyunsaturated uh, fats, which are better for you than the saturated fats. They're high in omega-3, and the studies have shown that eating uh, walnuts can lower your LDL, the cholesterol, uh, the bad cholesterol in particular. So. Um, walnuts are really good for you just to eat and munch on. So that's what we have here, our bananas. They are kind of the star of this recipe. If you don't get it right, your banana bread won't come out right. Now, there is a particular order and a particular chemistry that you have to use when you're making banana nut bread. You cannot just throw all of this in a pan or a mixing bowl and mix it up and think that it's going to cook right because it will not. It's different from a cake, it's different from cookies, different from pancakes. You have to order in a certain, uh, order the mixing in a certain uh, way. What we do is we're starting with um, our dry ingredients, the order that you're gonna use. We're gonna mix these ingredients together first then we're going to mix our eggs and our flavor together in this bowl. And then we're going to cream our sugar and eggs in this bowl. Always, always do not take your wet and put inside of your flour. You're just gonna end up with a big clump. So the chemistry of it all is that when you mix your wet ingredients, then you take your dry ingredients and then you start slowly mixing in with your wet ingredients. We are going to start with our flour and put it in this bowl. The other thing you want to make sure that you don't do is put too much flour. And you're probably saying, well, Miss Sadie, how can I put too much flour? Uh, some people, when they start mixing and it don't look right, they decide, I'm just going to add a little bit more flour. Don't do that. Follow this recipe that I have for you because it's been tested, it has been proven, and you don't have to make that mistake. Like I said, I made all of the mistakes for you. Baking powder and salt, we're adding those. And we wanna mix these three ingredients really well. Okay. Then we're gonna come over here, with our eggs, and our flavor, put those here. Mix them up really well together. Hey guys, I make my own flavor. It takes quite a while, but I'm gonna show you how to do that in another video. Over here we have our um, butter and we're going to Put it in this bowl. Then we're gonna add our sugar with that. Mad, the magic of it all, guys, is to take three of these and we're gonna mix them well together. Um, once we cream our butter and our sugar, then we're going to take our vanilla and our eggs mix those two together and slowly mix in our flour. But let me tell you what I have to do. I have to use the blender and it's kind of noisy. All right, 
we've got everything here we need to mix and I'm going to uh, let you watch me mix this up. What I do want to share with you uh, is that once we get this uh, mixed up, then we're going to see that um, our mixture may look a little curdled, but that is okay. You want that to happen. So we're going to mix our wet ingredients in first, our eggs and vanilla with our sugar. You can do this with your hand mixer and you can do it um, with your kitchen aid mixer, your stand mixer if you want to. I'm not going to do that because it's a little noisy and I can do this, you know, with my my mixer here, my spatula. I'll switch over and get my whisk too in just a minute. But I want it, you to be able to see how it's going to, want to match the sand. I want you to see how it's going to look curdled. You can see this mixture, like little white specks in there, and that's what you call curdling. Uh, you want it to look like that because that's part of the chemistry of making banana nut bread. Another common mistake in making banana nut bread is over mixing, and that's why I didn't use my, my electric mixer. I just want to do this with my hand. See how that's coming together? I can already feel the creaminess. I'm going to add our flour. We're just going to start with just a little bit said flour, but I meant our dry ingredients. Knock them all, put it all in there at the same time. Just a little bit at a time. Do like another third of it. Mixing. I know this looks like a lot of mixing, but guys, this banana nut bread we show that banana nut bread up at our local coffee shop here in town. Plus, it's going to save you a few pennies. The next ingredient we're going to add will be our bananas. A little thick right there. So, I've already measured this out and we've got two cups of mashed bananas. Mix that up really well. Just fold it in. We're not gonna mix a whole lot. Cause that's one of the common mistakes. And we're gonna put these golden walnut Nugget, nuggets in here next. Remember, I doubled the recipe, cost by half a cup, and this is just a cup of roasted nuts. Oh, it smells so good. I wish you could smell this. And it looks good. Perfect. Looks good. I'm not going to mix this anymore because we don't want to over mix it. So these are my small pans. I've had these pans right here for a long, long time. Been married 43 years. Probably had them 43 years. So I have these three little off pans, as you can see. Uh, it's, they have been used quite a bit. And then I have my medium sized pan. I've had this one for about 43 years too. I've been afraid to buy new pans because I have these seasoned and they bake really, really well. Now, I have something else I wanna share with you. Um, I've never used these before, but I'm gonna to try to use them this time since it's Valentine's Day. Uh, I purchased these, that I'm gonna call them cake pans, from um, the Pepper Chef several years ago. And I've never used them before, I'm just being honest. but. I have used a coffee can to make pound cake and banana nut bread in and blueberry bread. Um, I have not used these, but I'm going to try.
try to use it today. There's like two lids, one on the top and one on the bottom. And the direction said to put parchment paper in between um, the bottom layer and the top layer. Then you would spray inside of your can and then put the top on it and bake it in the oven. So today I think we have enough batter. Um, this one is a heart. Um, then we have the star shape and a circle, but we're just gonna use the heart since it's Valentine's Day. And we're gonna use this to spray it. I think we have enough, maybe, I think we have enough to make these two pans right here and the Valentine's heart. It's so cute. I can't wait to see how that's gonna turn out. I'm going to spray these pans put the batter in, bake them, and you, I need you to subscribe and like my video if you like it, please. And I'm gonna put these in the oven and come back and I wanna show you how to serve banana nut bread, the many different ways that you can do it. See you once we bake our banana nut bread. Thank you. We are back and we have lots of banana nut bread. Promised you we'd come back and I'd show you how you serve banana nut bread or the different kinds of ways uh, that you can eat it. And got my hot coffee here, um, it's delicious. So look at this spread, the banana nut bread really turned out nicely and we cooked it for one hour at 350 degrees in the oven and we use an electric knife to um, slice this up. Bread seems to slice better with an electric knife. So we'll start right over here. Um, this is the bread that we cooked in the can, the heart-shaped can, and it's so moist. I mean, it really, it bounces back up when you push it down. Uh, it's very delicious. Um, then we have um, one of the ways that you can serve it one of the many ways that you can serve it is with um, Greek yogurt for breakfast, lunch, or a snack. We have the Greek yogurt. Another way you can serve it is, um, my favorite way is cream cheese. Yes. And another way you can serve it is just with some plain butter. I like them both. So let's try a little piece of it with the cream cheese. This is really, really good. A little taste of butter here. Yum, 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 yum. Now, the way my husband likes like to eat it is with chicken salad, homemade chicken salad. Isn't that beautiful? We have two kinds of chicken salad here, a rotisserie chicken salad and then a grape um, chicken salad. Absolutely wonderful. And over here, we just have just some plain cut square pieces uh, that we cut with the electric knife. Another way that you might want to serve this is it's just with some fruit, just simple fruit, strawberries and blueberries um, and your banana nut bread. You can probably think of a hundred other ways that you can serve your banana nut bread. I'm just trying to have it with a good old cup of coffee and have a good time. But I want to say to all of you, happy Valentine's Day, happy, happy February, happy Valentine's Month. It is. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. I want you to come back because this is going to be sweet treats for the entire month of February. And you certainly don't want to miss my delicious chocolate creme brulee and a secret recipe that I'm going to share with you guys that you are really going to love. So here's a cup for you. Enjoy banana nut bread. I hope you had fun. See you back soon.